Yo, it's Yaya again, and I want to tell you guys that I am super biased to tag fighting games. Like, I grew up with Marvel vs. Capcom, just the world, the characters I already loved, the aesthetic of it, it's all fire to me. And the gameplay, being able to switch between all of the other characters, oh my god, it's outstanding. And also, I even like a lot about DBFZ, and I love Blades of Cross Tag Bot over here on this channel. Bottom line, I know a lot of you are just playing the game because it's another CC2 Arena Fighter after Storm 4, and you're still wishing for a Naruto Storm 5. Believe me, a lot of you haven't even seen Demon Slayer in the competitive Discord. You just bought the game because of who made it, and you know what? That's okay. What do you mean by that? So you want to learn how to pick the best teams in Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles, huh? Well, I got you with some ideas, some concepts, and some thought processes on how to pick your teams and your characters in Demon Slayer game. A lot of people think in Arena Fighters team building isn't important and it's just they just write it off because of the surface level compared to Arena Fighters. It may seem like there is no point, but on the contrary, there is. I even give you an example of what happened to me when I didn't bleed that way. So in the Wizard World tournament that I got top 8 in 2016, my one weakness in Naruto Storm 4 was the Tamari assist. To this day, I still haven't learned to match up because like, you know, I'm super lazy. And two, nobody really played Tamari unless you, you, ooh, I don't even want to get into it. But yeah, I got cooked. Nobody really played Tamari unless your internet connection was this bad. <coughs> Please fix Demon Slayer game. Regardless of going any further with today's tutorial, I'm just going to say this applies heavy to the game as well. Tears don't matter yet. Learning the game is what's the most important it's been. And it's only been out for less than a week. Remember, just to have fun. This leads us to my next point though. And get ready, hit the like button, and subscribe. Support types and choosing the assist you want. You need to understand your game plan when it comes to these games. Do you want to be keeping your opponent locked down in this game? Do you want the opponent to get called mashing? Do you want to be toxic? All right, I'm not going to teach you that unless you hit the like button. For example, my favorite character to play with is Shinobu, and my favorite team so far is Inosuke and Shinobu as an assist. A common thing I do online or a common online option I see people using with Shinobu is using the support skill to and to grab. Really good option that the whole roster can pretty much do. However, the pressure with Shinobu moves against your guard. Even if you try to push block it, if you mistime it, you could be in a really ugly situation afterwards because of Shinobu's assist. Another good tip to think about is which assist can benefit you regaining your resources. Essentially what I'm bringing to you guys is who has assists that lock down your opponent to where you can gain opportunities to charge your skill gauge. I think one of the best assists so far is Sabito. His normal skill hits about four to five times. If you're looking for another good character option, pick Nezuko, bruh. Nezuko's skill one is a giant version of Sabito's. It hits bigger, has a bigger hitbox, I believe, and legit her skill two can catch people constantly trying to run away or chase you down. Sometimes I call it the Hardur Hardur Heaven Kick of Pain, because literally you could throw it out and then not notice Nezuko being on the screen and then get hit, and then I get a free combo. So here's my take on the Zenitsu assist that a lot of people have been talking about. I think Zenitsu and his assist is one of the best in the game. Reason is because you can't really tell the difference which one it is unless you actually studied or learned Zenitsu or played them in the game. So what I'm bringing to your attention here is that Thunderclap and Flash Prime is just one hard heavy hit attack. Yeah, it may seem like you're in a disadvantage after using it, however... If you could do it successively after the opponent trying to just block, if they don't push block or anything and they do it completely wrong, you end up behind the opponent. Even after you block, you could just get an easy switch in afterwards. So there's an option there. One of the best characters to use with Zenitsu in my personal opinion would be Hinokami Tanjiro because his grab goes so far and you can't even backdash after the prime. You have to completely jump in the same direction that Zenitsu used prime in to avoid a switch in grab scenario. Next is understand your movement with both characters. See in Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles, the step mechanic intentionally throws off tracking. So just kind of aerial step forever for right now until somebody finds some strong counterplay to it. Or if you just get annoyed with somebody mindlessly dashing at you. Legit, I figured out if anything, this is one of Shinobu's weaknesses. So I came to realize that I will legit switch characters to air step faster with Tanjiro and other characters. On this channel, I still think Yoko Daki is one of the best characters in the game. And this brings up my one final last point right quick, is essentially figuring out who can cover both characters' weaknesses and traps. Don't be flowchart, don't have characters that do the same thing. Okay, that should have been explanatory, but I got it said in the video. 
So Yukodaki has traps, he can hide behind them, which from competitive Discord testing, they have stated that those traps can last anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds out. It's kind of annoying, kind of bunga. When you're losing, I think just having Yukodaki as a character on your team would be outstanding. I don't know, I just think that's nuts. Cause if you ain't got no meter, no options, anything like that, just throw out the trap with Yukodaki. What they gonna do? They're not gonna get over it, except for one character. And so far I've tested it, was that it was Nezuko. Cause Nezuko leaps over it. And she might get caught, who knows. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, I taught you a real quick and easy way to build your teams in Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles. I could go over all the characters, but we will be here for all day just theory crafting, using concepts and stuff like that. The only character that I think has a very mid-like assist would probably be Makomo. Her assist where she swings the sword twice, it can miss a lot, it can whiff a lot. It's actually frustrating using her as an assist. Use the other one, if anything, but... At the end of the day, I just think she might be one of the weaker assists in the game. That doesn't mean she's a bad character. Don't twist my words. Just saying I think she's a weaker assist out of the cast of Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles. Last tip is countering playstyles. So there are a lot of characters in the game that will counter Unga Bunga dashing or mashing after push block. Legit, if this video reached 100 plus likes, I'll give you guys a give you guys soon. I ain't forget that poll I put up this morning. You should have a character that counters a lot of so far deemed cheap stuff by the community in this week one already, alright? A good character that seems to counter aerial dashing will be characters that have a water wheel. And also, Rengoku's standing skill or skill one has a nasty hitbox. My go-to, in my opinion, and in my personal option, would always be just play Nezuko. Her charge hit is one of the best in the game because she can jump over a lot of traps and stupid charge hits, okay? Also, I didn't want to bring this to many people's attention, but Murata's skill one might be really strong there. And there are so many situations where I just get out mash and somebody's comboing me and then I just throw out Murata skill one and the horizontal range on it is crazy and it's just nuts in my opinion. Another little side tip, but you just have to figure that out when you play with your characters, get comfortable switching for other options. Some characters have better grabs, some characters have better things to do to break guards. Learn that out ASAP as well. So for example, with this clip here, I was comboing with Shinobu, but then I buffered into Murata just to get my charge up instantly while the assist was going off. Team synergy is something you gotta find out. And the best way I can tell you to do that is just pick a water wheel user or pick Tanjiro. And that's the end of the video. That being said, it's your boy Avatar Yaya, back like I never left with some more Demon Slayer content for y'all today. Thank you for watching today's video. Follow me on Twitter at Avatar Yaya underscore. Join the Discord in the description y'all know down below. And LGI, let's get it, let go. And remember, you guys are amazing. Thank you for 13.5K. We're almost on the road to 14K, y'all. Been having fun making Demon Slayer content, theory crafting and stuff like that in the first week. It's been phenomenal. But I want you guys to remember, you guys are golden, and that is raw. Squala, peace, and I'm out. Well, that's it, I'm the world. I've been the devil, I need me a hawk, and I'm water, my breathing, I feel like time's right. Walking this bitch with a sound box, I'm on the